Hello and welcome to Clay the Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. It is time, everybody, for the big reveal of my New England sun porch. So come on, let's do this. environment, I was under the impression that I was going to be making a bunch of functional furniture objects to fill a room. I really didn't consider that this environment was going to be my typical body of work or anything I would even consider to be my personal artwork. But as I was making things, I needed to store my pieces and I wanted to make sure I kept them safe so every time I finished an object, I would finish it and move it into my bedroom. When it comes to my personal artwork, I always have the habit of sleeping with my art. And there are even pictures of me on social media, bedding in the middle of the gallery, spending the night with my work once it was completed. The more of these pieces I continued to make, the more I started filling up my bedroom with them and started interacting with them. I'm storing my favorite couch craft at the moment in the activity chest, which is what it was intended for. This is the bench that I would use in the mornings to lace up my running shoes. And the table served its purpose for where I would do some editing. So the lamp became my nightlight. And then I'd wake up every morning with my little ginger monster curled up in this pod. And the more I spent time with these objects, the more I realized and accepted that this is my current body of work. And I've gone through this whole art versus craft thing is a constant thing. And I'm not going to get into the debate of that, but I've accepted it as being an artwork and an installation and not just these functional objects. Whenever I make a piece of artwork, I go into my head and I don't know really what the piece is going to like reveal to me. It's kind of like people who journal, they have this sense of self-meditation, self-reflection, but for me, that journaling is whatever my two hands produce and whatever these objects are. And so it's not until after I make an artwork that I'm sitting with it and I can look at it and I can contemplate what its message is and what it's trying to tell me. So I'd like to present to you my newest installation and I'm going to give you an artist statement. Um, so here is my New England sun porch. I was one of those kids who used to love watching home shows, would watch things like Trading Spaces, Christopher Lowell, New Yankee Workshop, Renette Jennings, Martha Stewart. Those were my heroes when I was really young. I remember something that stuck with me. There was this period where a bunch of the interior designers were starting to use feng shui a lot. It's a Chinese practice of using elements to design your environment around and the flow of the room. The feng shui elements, they are fire, water, wood, metal, and earth. And being a young, naive artist and in love with watching all of those designers and artists and just starting to learn that I could wield a drill and a jigsaw and in the backyard of my parents' house, I naively would do things like cut out giant shapes of wood that look like puddles and paint on flames on things and call it a fire and water piece. Um, so 
Since then, I've matured much in my thought process and I do try to incorporate the subtleties of things much more. I'm not like in your face about it, but I bring this up because those feng shui elements are still things that have adapted into my practice. I don't always push them to the forefront. They are a subtlety that begin to crop up in the work itself. And that has definitely happened here. Metal for the lantern, wanting to glow this light and putting in the keystones to try and represent fire. I did have a flickering bulb in, but for camera's sake, it did not work well. The water is present in the elements, cooking and in the dyeing of the fabric. I had water baths. It was present in the throwing of the clay. Fire comes into play with the firing process. So a lot of the elements I'm now using in process, we don't see a giant pot of water here, but it was very important creating this environment. Running parallel to that, I am a complete granola. I love the woods and I am all about being in nature, in case you can't tell, this entire room is themed to the life cycle of leaf. I have always been connected to trees, to the forest, to the woods, my place of centering, my place of being. I do appreciate flowers, but I much prefer leaves. To me, the leaves are the lifeblood of the tree. It's what keeps the tree going. The trunk is the bulk of the tree, and, and we are vessels, we are those trunks, we are those trees. And the leaves are the moments and the memories and the events and things that happen to us that make up our sense of being. Leaves are like all those little things in life that we always overlook and forget but become forever a part of who we are and they're not just those grand showy events of when the flower shows up for three weeks or a week or a day. The leaves are there and integral to everything that we are and so this environment was really about embracing those moments, embracing those points in your life, letting those transition through you and going on that journey from start to finish. And sometimes those memories are things that we have to lose. When the leaf falls from the canopy of the tree and decomposes, goes into the earth, becomes compost, becomes clay, those nutrients break down, they feed the trunk and they become part of the nutrients that go back up to the canopy of the tree. It's all this ongoing cycle that just continues to present itself. And that's what our lives are, this cyclical nature of these events that happen to us that are can be the most mundane thing. Who taught you how to tie your shoes? Do you remember? Or who taught you how to brush your teeth? But every morning you go to tie your shoes or you go to brush your teeth and those moments became part of you, whether you remember who taught you them or not. Yes, it's a bit of this ebb and flow of happiness and sadness, for better or worse. It is the journey that the leaf goes to memories that come and may fall away to us that we reabsorb, becoming everyday parts of us. When I think of New England, I think of changing leaves, I think of time passing. One of the main things that happened when I came to California is that seasons kind of are not existent and time sort of just loops over itself. Being locked up in this pandemic and going through this journey for the past five months, you guys five months it's been a couple of years for me actually it's been a time of reflection as I made these objects about really sitting with myself and figuring out where I am and where my place is in the world. That is what this environment has taught me. I see this environment as a resting place to come and reflect on our leaves, on moments in life, to lay to rest the fallen, fallen leaves, the fallen moments, and to prepare for the new coming moments, to get ready for what's to come in our lives. That is my New England sun porch. That is all I have for you right now. I hope you enjoyed this journey that I have been on and that I've been thankful to have you supporting and being here with me. <laughs> May your trees be filled with the most beautiful and incredible leaves possible.